And we're going to talk about the server and cloud enrollment. I already called out the name earlier, but what is it? It's like an enterprise enrollment, but it has standardization options for the Microsoft server uh, backend and cloud backend, so to say. So these are typically the products that you license in a server and cloud enrollment. Um, you license core infrastructure and Microsoft calls it the core infrastructure suite, but it's basically a combination of Windows Server and System Center. Um, you license the application platform aspect, uh, either it being SQL Server, SharePoint Server, or BizTalk. Um, you have the option to standardize on Visual Studio. And there was the option, it's actually no longer available, to uh, have a server and cloud enrollment single and solely uh, dedicated to Microsoft Azure. That option is no longer available, but what you can do is standardize on one of the previously called out products and add Azure to your server and cloud enrollment. Um, the reason that server and cloud enrollments for Azure only are no longer available is because Microsoft wants you to use the Microsoft customer agreement for this. So what do you need to do? Um, you need to identify, again, your committed baseline that you uh, want to uh, have under contract. So you identify the products that you want to um, standardize on and any existing licenses that you have, um, you would need to take into account for your server and cloud enrollment. These include licenses that you have with software assurance any existing licenses that you have without software assurance and new licenses that you might need. If you have done this inventory, then you need to ensure full SA coverage in the server and cloud enrollment. So you need to renew SA for every uh, existing license that you already have with software assurance. And for licenses that you don't have, you need to either buy a new license with software assurance or you need to buy subscription SKUs if you're, for instance, um, doing this with core infrastructure suite, all your baseline license for Windows Server must also be covered with a system center because you don't license Windows Server separately. You license it as a combination of Windows Server and system center. <clears throat> what does it look like in the core infrastructure example? Well, you identify your position and then you decide how do you want to license this. So if you have Windows Server licenses and System Center licenses with a, a software assurance, um, and we call it a SIS license here, you can renew SA on these uh, in a, an SCE commitment. But if you also have 160 Windows Server standard licenses without SA, you would need um, sorry, with SA, you would need to include those as well and then include them as core infrastructure suite. So you would need to buy the system center part for these SIS licenses. And if you have licenses in use without SA, so for instance, the 96 Windows Server data center and 48 Windows Server standard, you would need to either purchase uh, all new uh, licenses with software assurance for core infrastructure suite data center and core infrastructure suite standard or you have the option to buy subscription licenses for this and this is something that is purely available for the server and cloud enrollment is that you are able to buy subscription licenses for these software products um, and these have the added benefit that they become somewhat flexible and but what I mean with that is that on an anniversary basis, you are able to reduce the amount of subscription licenses that you have. They're quite heavily priced, um, even, uh, and they're not perpetual. So in the event that your contract ends and you don't have a, a subscription or you do have the subscription license, you would need to buy out the subscription licenses like in the enterprise subscription agreement to become perpetual owner of this. And um, more on this in the, the deep dive that we're doing for the uh, enterprise agreement contract.